Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope all is well. Today I wanna to share with you a really fun groove that I'm completely ripping off from one of my favorite drummers, this guy named Alon Rubin. As you can hear, this thing is moving. You got this really fast hi-hat part, these tasty ghost notes on the snare, and these quick doubles on the bass drum. So if you're looking for a nice challenge today, something that requires some next level techniques to pull off, but still sounds really good with music and it's very applicable, I would stick around. All right, let's break this thing down. And by the way, I'll have the link for the video clip of Alon playing this groove in the description box for you guys to check out. And I would definitely go check it out. He is a beast. But you wanna start on the hi-hat with this thing. And it's just eighth notes going on, but the trick is you wanna use what's called the molar stroke technique when you play them. And all that is is this kind of throw and then a wind back up. And that gives you two strokes for one overall motion. So you have the throw, wind up, throw, wind up. You wanna make sure that you're hitting the edge of the hi-hats with the shoulder of your stick for the downbeats, and then the top of the hi-hat with the tip of your stick for those upbeats. And what that's gonna do is give the hi-hats this nice dynamic pulse versus just even eighth notes. And I'll demonstrate this for you first at 70 beats per minute, and then at our goal tempo today of 140 beats per minute. As you can see, we're gonna get pretty fast today. So for those of you out there that don't have any experience with that molar stroke thing, I want you to take that very slowly at first. Just concentrate on those round, fluid motions. And then as the tempo goes up, you wanna to start to lower your stick heights. Make it feel as easy as possible and don't muscle it out. You are not doing this right if you feel like you're working real hard. The stick and the leverage of that motion should do the work for you. For the next step, we're gonna add in the snare backbeats. And what's a little weird about the snare backbeats in this groove is that they're not gonna fall on two and four like normal. You know, like normally when we play a groove, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. For this groove, the snare backbeats are gonna fall on beat three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so this is called a halftime groove because there's half the snare drum notes per measure. And that gives the groove kind of a more open and bigger feel. Let me show you. Here's where the fun starts to come in. We're gonna add some of the ghost notes on the snare drum. It's gonna sound like a lot at first, but it's just alternating strokes. So it'll be like this. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, together. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, together. Right, left, right, left, right, left. I told you it's a lot. Let me show you. There are a couple things that are really tricky about that. The first is gonna be playing the ghost notes as soft as possible, or the groove's just gonna sound like chaos. The other thing that's really tricky is continuing to have that pulsed motion while you're adding in those ghost notes. That left hand is gonna wanna disrupt the flow of the right, and it just takes time to iron that out. But don't lose sight of the fact that it's just the same thing over and over again. 
Those ghost notes fall right after the backbeat in the same position every time, cascading over the bar line. Once you get the hang of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's not as crazy as it sounds. After that starts to happen, you can start to incorporate some bass drum underneath. If you can play that, then you've pretty much got the overall feel for this thing nailed down, and that's no easy feat. But if you want to play it just like Elon, there are a couple more steps that are going to start to get really challenging. And by the way, if you want to take a look at these steps on your own, I'll have the transcription of this drum lesson linked in the description box, and you'll be able to listen to each individual step. You can slow down the examples, speed them up, and work at your own pace. So for the next step, we're going to shift the last ghost note in each of the measures one sixteenth note earlier, and that's going to create a little double stroke grouping on the snare. With those double strokes on the snare, you want to be sure that you're using your fingers to get them. So you do one squeeze, and that should give you two strokes. Simple as that. Now for the last step, we're going to add in one more note on the bass drum, and it's actually going to be in that very last spot in the measure where we move that ghost note from, and that's going to give us a quick double stroke on the bass drum. Notice as I play this that I'm not muscling out each stroke. I'm actually sliding my foot up the pedal board to give me both of them. So it's da-da, da-da, and not da-da, da-da. That'll allow you to do it much quicker and with a lot less effort. All right, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. I really hope you enjoy working on this. Again, I'll have the transcription for this drum lesson linked in the description box. But thanks, as always, for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all next time. You take it easy. Bye-bye.